up guys? Man, does it feel good to say that because I haven't made a video in about a week and it's felt like three months or something. It's been ridiculously long. I've been recovering from my wisdom tooth uh, surgery and um, I had all four pulled and I'm really glad to be finally feeling better. I still have like a slight irritation here and there, but it's not that bad. It's um, It's been recovering pretty well now and uh, I'm in a really good mood in general. I'm really happy to be able to make, uh, be making videos again. It's Like I said, it, it's really felt like forever and I've been kind of just still focusing on Force of Will and still being kind of in the background but not actually making any videos or really discussing with much people about what's been going on just because I've been so out of it on pain meds and everything. So um, this video is going to be the story of uh, SKL Part 2. Uh, I'm not going to name it Part 2 because I feel like it looks shabby. Um, I'll think of something creative um, while I'm filming. I don't really have anything in mind. But um, this is the interaction after uh, the whole Faria and Alice incident. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure to watch. I think I named it Genesis. So the SKL Genesis video will be Part 1. This video will be Part 2. And without any other like announcements or interruptions, let me get straight into the story of SKL after Genesis. So last we heard about Alice and Faria was their interaction with Melgis. Uh, Melgis had gone to war with Faria and if it wasn't for Alice's uh, saint healing powers, uh, Faria would have been killed by Melgis's god ability. Uh, Faria explains to Alice that in this world there are seven kings that kind of just uh, in conjunction rule over the world but they're not all really friendly and they all have like their disputes and whatnot and so she says that if you know you want to be able to fight that one which is what uh, Faria calls her uh, I mean calls him or her whoever the main source of evil the primogenitor is going to be um, that you're gonna need the cooperation of all of the seven kings and she explains that she herself will talk to Melgius because now after surviving his Goddard he might have some sort of uh, respect for him for, for Faria, I mean, and um, so that might be a way that they can get Melgis on their team. She explains that uh, Persia is, um, she doesn't uh, want anything but peace. She's just very, like, uh, nature-friendly, and uh, she shouldn't be too hard to convince because she is just so peaceful and wants nothing but uh, the well-being of everyone. She says that Arla is an honorable man, and of course, as an angel, it's his right to kind of protect the realm and whatnot so she's not too worried about Persia and Arla and she says that she herself will talk to Melgis so it shouldn't be too much of a problem uh, and then she tells uh, Alice that she should go talk to Valentina as uh, Valentina has kind of this weird obsession with things that are beautiful and when Alice asked Faria well you know why do you want me to be the one to go talk to Valentina Faria explains that you're just, you know, beyond beautiful and she'll find such interest in you that she might be actually willing to listen to why you want to, um, you know, get everyone together and what we need to do to kind of like save this world. And so um, they set out so that Faria can go talk to Melgis and Alice can talk to Valentina. So Alice sets off for Shangri-La, which is the paradise on the ocean. Uh, this is a city that's literally built on water and it's where Valentina rules. Um, she notices that on her way in, there is of course a lot of boats and everything with a bunch of sailors, uh, there's traders because it is a merchant city, and all of these people seem to have a weird eye on her. She feels as though she's being watched and uh, it makes her feel extremely uncomfortable because she doesn't understand why a random merchant city is so obsessed with what she's doing. Uh, she sets out to go see Valentina and Valentina is just of course on her throne room. Uh, she has a bunch of servants trying to play her music. Uh, there's people of course walking around with food trying to you know just uh, bring everything to her as she needs. She's kind of like this spoiled um, kind of like this queen that just kind of sits on her throne and does nothing all day. That's kind of the vibe you get from her. And uh, when Alice meets Valentina uh, at first while she's waiting you know like outside for the guard to go tell Valentina like oh you have a visitor. Um, Valentina's question to the guard is, what's the person's appearance? So it's weird that she, apparently, she's so obsessed with, um, the way people look that she wouldn't want to meet with someone that's particularly not beautiful. And the guard says, oh, well, you know, this girl meets your standards of what you consider beautiful. And she tells the guard, okay, go ahead and let her in. So Alice meets with Valentina and as Alice is, you know, saying, you know, hi, my name is Alice, you know, I have this request from you, Valentina just says, I agree. And Alice is sitting there super confused, like, what do you mean you agree? I haven't actually even said anything to you yet. 
And Valentina says that I can't resist um, agreeing to the first request of someone so beautiful. So she's literally like already getting obsessed with Alice. And it's really interesting because if you read the flavor text on her, it says the ruler who controls the city that lives on trading Shangri-La. She loves destiny and beautiful things infinitely. She felt that Alice was destined to be hers. And so she aimed to own her. And um, on her J ruler side, it says... Uh, Alice, you'll definitely be mine. This is a meeting decided by faith. So you can see that she's kind of obsessed with this um, need to own Alice. And she actually tells Alice herself, like, uh, Faria had warned Alice that uh, Valentina is going to automatically accept your request. And so Alice kind of saw it coming. And she says, um, okay, well, you know, what do you want in return? And Valentina specifies, if I help you with what you need, I'm going to own you. And Alice says, you know, well, that's not possible because I have to go back to Faria and help, like, you know, rule over the world. Well, not rule over the world, but, like, save the world. So, uh, she's a little scared that Valentina's now gonna, you know, take back her agreement and not help her with the request. But Valentina simply says, okay, that's fine. You know, I have a trade relationship with both Gloria, which is Faria City. And so she doesn't want any bad blood between her and Faria because they have a proper trade going on. And she also has a really good, um trade business with Ligonus, the mechanical city, which is, of course, where uh, Machina is. So uh, it would be great to see if Valentina can get uh, Machina on their side while Faria is getting Melgus on their side. And uh, Persia and um, Arlo are already not a problem. So everything's kind of coming really nice together. And um, there's no mention of Rezard, which is really interesting. It's not even said that, oh, you know, he's going to be the hardest one to convince. There's literally just absolutely no mention about him. So we might see him in the next part of the story, which would be really interesting because I'm dying to see what his angle is on everything because all the art that's coming out for the new set, you see him with a bunch of cards and he's standing just like this picture of Alice, but almost mirrored when he has all the playing cards instead. So it's just really interesting. I want to see why he's connected to Alice in this weird way. So... Um, there's no mention of Rezard, and, um, so yeah, Valentina says, that's fine, I'll agree upon your request to get everyone together, I uh, will talk to, uh, Machina and see if we can get this meeting started, and so Alice just, uh, leaves to go back to Gloria to tell Faria that, you know, she's been successful, and as Alice leaves, Valentina kind of starts talking to this, like, shadow that's, uh, really close to her, and it's, it's a girl that's wearing, like, this twilight clothing, and she has a black cat, which is, of course, we know as Dark Alice. And Dark Alice says, well, what do you plan to do now? Um, and Valentina says, well, you, you told me Alice would come, and she did. And everything will go as intended. Um, I'm going to rule, and Alice will be mine. So it's really interesting how that plays out. You can tell that um, Valentina is kind of just crazy, as we've seen from the trailer of the new thing, which is, I guess, somewhat spoilers, which kind of sucks um, that we already know somewhat what's going on. But um, Valentina is apparently going to work with Dark Alice to take control of all the um, Seven Kings and make them evil. We just don't know how uh, Rezard and Machina fall into this story. So it's still interesting to see how that's going to play out. That's everything that happens in this part of the story. So make sure you like check in for the next one. I'll be updating you guys as always. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do because I have a ton of more content coming this week. And I will catch you guys next time.